Konnichiwa everybody, hope you had a good new year. We got the first project of 2017 with these guys. These are the file... Stay still, thank you. These are the file carving gouges. These are very nice, they're very pricey as well. However, when you buy them, they'll last you a good long while. And as a woodworker, you work really hard to get these nice razor sharp edges on these things and your other tools and nothing is worse than dinging them up in your toolbox. So I was trying to come up with a way to protect the edges of these guys. And rather than go with the leather, I have this nice piece of cedar. Now most guys, like I said, will make leather covers or some guys will take uh, vinyl and make little wraps for them, but we're gonna go a little classier with this. This little piece of scrap is something I've had for a while. And as you can see, we have enough space to make some decent covers for these. So first order of business we're gonna do is we're actually going to cut this piece here, and as a little proof of concept, here's a little one I just put together out of some spruce that I had laying around. And as you can see, it fits on like so. And with the wood, it has a nice little locking system, it seems. Maybe it just cuts into it just a little bit, but that's okay. My wife actually decorated this one. She is awesome. So, we're going to make another one out of cedar. see if I can do this on camera without losing a finger. There we go. Easy peasy. We now have a nice little sandwich there. This guy may or may not split, but luckily if we use this one, this big guy, we got space. And if we simply use this split this way, I believe we'll have enough for our little one. Absolutely. Since this guy is basically only four millimeters wide, we're only looking about that much space. So to save a little bit of time, I got another little scrap wood thing here. I don't have a carving bench, so this is just a piece of scrap paduk I picked up for a couple bucks. And rather than sand both of these sides flat, all we're going to do is we're just going to find the way that the grain aligns, and we're going to cut right along in there with the same shape as our gouge that we're going to be making. A cover for. So, just going to basically take a couple of measurements here. Grab a pencil, because remember, measure, 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 then maybe make a cut, and then measure again. So we're just going to make some rough measurements here. Measurements there. These may not show up on the camera. Probably can't see those there and there, but that's okay. I should probably mention as well that the reason you're using this gouge to actually make the cover for it is because the only thing that will match this profile perfectly with this slight curve here, this is a number five curve, is going to be this gouge. So if you make one out of sandpaper, guarantee it's going to be off. If you try to wrap one out, guarantee it's going to be off. Sometimes the best option is just the tool that you've got. So all I'm doing here is I'm basically just taking some very small passes on this cedar and I'm just starting in between my two lines that I've measured and just slowly scooping my way out. Being careful not to put my hand in front of this because this will cut your fingers off. And got a little bit there. So you just keep working this way until you've got a deep enough cut to where you can actually sit the gouge a good distance of the way down. My goal for this one is to actually have it sit probably about this far down. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want these edges here to bite into the wood just a little bit so that they hold themselves on once you put the cover on. So you can kind of see where I'm working there. We're going to just scoop out this little bit right there. Alright, so once you've got your basic idea of where you're going to see this thing sit, rather than coming in from this side the entire way, take your piece, flip it around so you're actually cutting away from yourself and you'll find that you actually do a little bit better job of scooping that wood out rather than try to push it in and kind of lift it out like that, you're actually just going to cut the entire way through. And basically, you get a much cleaner cut. It's much more consistent because you're actually pushing it down into your wall here. If you've used gouges at all, you know that the steeper of the angle that you go in with the more wood you take out. So basically, all our passes, we're just getting these 
tiny little paper like shavings as you can see there and we're just going to keep working at it all right so as you can see we're making some progress we have a nice little dish shape here that follows the curve of our gouge quite nicely so if I'm holding this on there you can see that the edge is just barely above the edge of the gouge is barely above the edge of the wood there and you don't want to go too deep because you do want there to be some friction between these edges here that kind of lock that gouge in place so we're going to take our other side of our piece of wood here and the grain is the one this is the piece where the grain matches up as you can see we kind of got this little smiley face thing going on here and we're just going to take the slightest bit out of this top part here to create enough clearance for this tool to fit through so as you can see doesn't quite want to go in, it kind of wants to separate that wood. And we want a tight fit, but you don't want it so tight that you have to basically cut the cover every time you put it in. So we're just going to repeat the same process, but before I do that, I'm actually going to take my pencil. These are all just rough measurements. You don't really have to work with perfectly squared up stock to do this. We're just working with scrap wood. So you can go as complex with this or as simple as you like, you may not be able to see my markings there. But we're just going to repeat our process. Okay, so we're at the point now where I've got roughly two dishes of approximately the same shape and the width. And we have this nice kind of little oval thing going on here. And now if we just do a test fit, I'm just going to hold this with my hands and very carefully. So I've still got some separation there, but to back it off, we actually have a pretty tight fit. Not quite to the depth I want, so we're going to cut just a little bit more. You can see a separation happening there and how it closes. So we're going to cut a little tiny bit more and then we're going to check it again. Alright, made a few more shavings and now we're looking a lot better. As you can see, we've got this little uh, kind of potato trap thing going on here. And if we try to insert it with just hand friction, we have very little opening on either side, which is great. Now, one reason I don't recommend actually flattening the sides is I like the idea that this is the illusion that it's a single piece of wood. So, as you can see, we've got a really nice tight line there. And we can sand this down as always. It's kind of invisible on this side as well. And it's nice to have little tricks that you can kind of show off to your friends and they'll go, whoa, man, how'd you do that? Well, not that hard. You just split the wood along the grain and leave the grain, and thus you have that. For the glue on these, you can use whatever you want. I'm going to use fish glue. This is the Stumac kind. And it really doesn't take a lot. Remember, these are not going to get any uh, significant amount of pressure or blunt force trauma on them. So you just close these up just in the way that they were separated. And because this is split along the grain, I'm going to get a pretty good match there. So I've got a nice set there. Glue it up with a couple of uh, clamps that are probably a little too big for this project. But if you can't go big, then just go home. But that's that. We're going to let that sit off to the side while we go do the other one. So for this one, we're going to just repeat the exact same process. I took some more of that stock and split it down just a little bit further. And right about there is where we're going to make our little mouth in the exact same process as we did with the other one. Just put it in our little jig and start cutting. These small tools are the worst things to ding up because these edges are so fine. So take a little bit extra care to make sure that these are really really extra tight. Now on these little ones here is a little technique for you. If you want to make sure you're actually cutting right where this is instead of just guessing just take your pencil make a couple of, oh I got a text, little tiny marks on the inside and there you go. So we're at the point now I've got a nice little uh, mouth here and as far as fit goes pretty tight. I can actually suspend it and I'm barely putting any pressure with my hands on that. So we're going to do the exact same glue up with this one. You might notice I'm leaving all this waste back here. The only reason I'm doing that is because it's a lot easier to work a large piece of wood than it is to work a tiny piece of wood. And if I cut this to the length that this is going in here, so you can see it's only going in maybe 
about that far. This would be an incredibly tough piece to try to work down. So leaving all this extra waste gives me a little bit something to hold on to. It makes it easier to make it look cleaner and then I can always cut it off and make it look a lot nicer after it's all said and done. But same technique as before, when you split with the grain, the wood just splits the way it wants to so you don't get any saw lines and you tend to get a pretty invisible break line. So if we glue this up with a little bit of uh, sanding, a little bit of touch up, we should be right where we are with the other one. All right, sometime later, these are dry. Enough to hold themselves together. And we test them out, see if they're gonna work. And I think I'm putting that in upside down, I am. So if we simply slide this guy in, as you can see, ain't going nowhere, which is good news. Same thing for this guy. Get it in there right, that would help a lot. Ain't going nowhere. So for a little added fun, I decided on the big one, I'm not actually going to sand this guy down. Since we sawed it, you can notice that it's pretty much made that seam invisible on this side. We'll probably have to take this down just a bit. But rather than sand this down perfectly flat, I'm actually going to take the same gouge that we used to make this with. And we're just going to texture this top like so. So we've got kind of a little interesting, kind of tough to see this on the camera. There, you can kind of see it. So a little bit more interesting than just a flat surface, but I'm gonna go over most sides with this. The end grain, I will probably just end up sanding. So you may have noticed I did decide to sand down just the mouth and the rear of the big guy here, just to make it a little bit smoother. Here's our little one. And it's not perfect, but you know what? A tool sometimes just needs to be functional. So that's what we have with this guy. Cedar looks really cool when it's sanded too. And just for a little added touch, I have some shellac here, which I already prepared. And we're just gonna touch this up. The nice thing with shellac is it dries very, very quickly, seals the wood really, really well. You're not going to kill yourself by breathing it, which is great. There's enough on there just to kind of coat it a tad. It doesn't take a lot to do a lot of work. A little goes a long way. And you can use whatever you want. In fact, you really don't even have to finish these things. I just wanted to do it just because I have patience for this kind of thing and I think it looks rather cool. Now with the textures on the big one here, it's going to look a little bit different. But yeah, we're in good shape on this guy. Shellac done. We'll let these dry for a few minutes. All right, now that our shellac is dry, we are officially finished. So the way you can tell top and down on these, you just look at it and if you look at the little wider spot, the wider slot should be on the bottom. We have a nice tight fit on this guy. We don't have any splitting going on. And same for this dude. A nice tight fit. And there are your wooden edge protectors. If you look at it from the end, it looks like it's a single piece of wood. Neat little project. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Like and comment and share if you want to see more like this.